All right, Coach, 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 how you doing, man? I hope all is well. Um, I think I made you co-host so you can speak as well. Can you hear me, Coach? All right, uh, Coach probably be putting baby to sleep right now, J JD to sleep right now. All right, thank you for the two that join right now. We are live on YouTube, Instagram, uh, nope, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook, two Facebook groups, and somewhere else, LinkedIn. So you're live right now in there. Uh, thank you for joining. I don't want to waste your time. It's been a busy and exciting day for myself and others. Uh, right now, I'm just showing you our logo, but I'm going to make that minimize. And when Coach come off, he'll give us a little bit of a market analysis, what's going on in the market today. Um, I'm Coach Terrence Williams, T. Williams, Coach T. Williams. And our goals is to help people to make profitable deals so that they can learn strategies for retirement, um, build long term wealth, get some cash flow and have an income that they decide that they want to make at retirement. Um, it's, it's our practice that 401ks, 403bs, um, Roth IRAs, Roth 401, 401s are basically annuity for amount of time. So if you retire at age 59 and a half, um, you get paid a portion of that money. And then when you get 65, you get the full amount of that money. But if you base it off of 20 years, 60 to 80, and you overlive 80, then you only have left is a balance of um, so much. You don't have any money left after 20 years. Uh, it's paid out. Um, so if you want to get ahead of that problem in that situation, then we're definitely advising you to use a two real estate strategies to get you started and have a controllable retirement strategy where you're making an income of your choice. You're making the amount of money you want, and this is how we do it, right? So again, I appreciate everybody for coming on, and I'm going to go ahead and get started because, again, in good steward of your time, I'm going to show you exactly what I do. Exactly. I'm not going to hold back from you how I make money in real estate. Um, this is one of the methods that I've used over and over again. And sometimes, I'll be honest and upfront, sometimes those checks come slow, but when they come, they're coming steady and on time at the first of the month, every month. So how to buy a house with Section 8 vouchers. Now, I always believe in having three exit strategies when I do anything, right? If that makes sense to you, uh, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up in Facebook. Give me a thumbs up in this chat right here if that makes sense to have three exit strategies when you do things, right? Um, one, I definitely want to make some kind of cash flow, right? I want to make the cash flow. Two, I want a tax break. And three, I want long-term wealth, long-term wealth. Now, my extra strategy would be, hey, I can sell this property to someone else and make money, right? I can sell this property to someone else and make money. I can sell this property to the tenants that's renting a house for me and make money, right? Or I could do a lease option to the tenants and give them opportunity to buy something they probably wouldn't have did at first because I'm being a bank now. And the lease option, I'm being a bank. If I just sell it to the tenant, I'm telling them to go to the bank and get the loan, right? Perfect. That's three strategies right off the bat that I'm saying that, hey, first, I got three breaks up front, cash flow, tax breaks. And I'm building long-term wealth by them paying down my amortization of my loan, right? They're, my loan is 100000 Every month they pay, they're paying it down. If they're paying it down, that's equity that's building and that cash value to me. That's plus, right? The next thing will be, hey, I want to get rid of this property. I would like the tenants to buy it from me with Section 8 vouchers. They got programs out there that they can use a Section 8 voucher to buy your house. Perfect, right? If that can't happen. Hey, when I start renting you, let me figure out your credit score, not to just get in your business, not to disqualify you, but to see how I can qualify you. Not to disqualify you, but to see what steps I need to take to assist you and qualify you, right? So you get loan from the bank. Perfect, right? The banker like me, I like the banker. I'm giving them a deal. Third, Hey, you can't get your credit right. You can't get your stuff right. You just too whack, too far out of whack. I'll take a chance. I'll take a chance. Lease option, come up with this amount of money down, and then I will sell the house to you over a couple of years, and I'll give you a credit, a tax credit every year for you buying it from me. 
guys, it's a win, win, win situation. Nobody messed over nobody, right? So this is in PDF, and I hope I don't freeze up. I may need to take my camera off, and I probably will. Um, yeah, let me turn the camera off. I live in the country. It's going to freeze up. As you can see, I got 100 windows open at the top because I do a lot of a lot of studying, right? And that that that's not smart, but it is what it is. Uh, so I'm going to take my camera. All right, y'all, I muted myself instead of turn off my camera. <laughs> Not smart, man. Hey, you don't got to be smart to do this. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm looking at the camera in my eye. I'm looking at my, my other screen and seeing myself. All right. So, all right, again, let me let me recap real quick. We're talking about the top, the bottom right corner right here, wholesaling. Wholesaling is when you buy a property, all right, at steep discount. Instead of selling the property at a steep, at a high price, you're going to sell the property at a medium price right in between and then whatever the difference is you're gonna get an equity to the buyer burr i believe in if i make a profit off of doing a three or four wholesale deals i would take that money and buy my rental with that money opm i made money by selling properties not at a high price but at a, a, a good price for an investor that profit i make i'm gonna collect and i'm gonna buy my first rental I'm going to continue to wholesale so I can keep on making residual money right now. I make some more money and then I'm going to fix my property. I'm going to fix on that property at Burr. Once I burr it, I'm going to refinance that property. I'm going to refinance that property. I'm going to rehab that property. Well, rehab it, rent it out, and I'm going to refinance and I'm going to repeat that over and over again. And you can build your portfolio up like that. All right. So this is a little bit of the, I hope you read this part. I wanted to break down that part because this little picture right here is important to me. All right. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, you're more than welcome to go to Why We Be Great. You're more than welcome to go to investnow 2021websites um, uh, websites and look me up. Um, I do. I have wrote a, two books now. I published two books total, uh, one for adolescents and one for toddlers. Um, I am a school teacher by trade, certified school teacher, certified principal um, for to be a principal. I've never been a principal. And I am in the military, currently serving for the retiring. Sorry for the typos. All right. I need to fix that. All right. That's not professional. All right. So what are we on this call about? We're not on this call about me. It's about you. Um, Section 8 vouchers have something called a HUD program. The HUD program is the housing and the urban development program. That program provides benefits and entitlements to people that's at a certain income ratio. And by them being at a certain income ratio, we're looking at the government saying basically, hey, I'm going to give you something if you meet this standard, right? And everybody on Section 8 housing is not trying to take advantage of the system, not bad people, not uh, horrible people. They just in a situation where they need some assistance. And what we're going to do is say, hey, you don't have to stay in that spot. You met me. Since you met me, I would love to sell you my property. I would love to sell you my property. I have no issues. I have no attachment. It's just a property. And I don't mind selling to you. So we're going to look at what the factor sheet is. And if you want this PowerPoint, just um, you know, go to my Investor Now 2021, and I'll give you this PowerPoint so you can have it. It is hyperlink, but I'll give you that stuff so you can go click on the fact sheet. All right. So let's talk about the next part of it. <laughs> what is um what kind of investor are you? Excuse me, y'all. What kind of investor are you? Are you one of the ones that want to work hard every day and learn by by your actions? All right. That's an active investor. That's a person that actually going out there learning by their actions. They're they're being in the business, they're dealing with with buyers, they're dealing with sellers, they're dealing with real estate agents, they're dealing with um, loan officers, um, and everyone else, right? They're, they're, they're learning by being involved. That's active. 
and you get a paid a little bit of money for doing that. You have passive investors. I am a passive investor most of the time. Even though I have several rental properties, even though I have several different companies, I like to be at the top where I'm like saying, hey, here's my money. Go help me make money with my money. And I just oversee the process. Keep me updated and I'll check back in with you. That's what I like to do. I got to that place, not by being passive up front. I got to the place by being active up front. I had to get in the business. I had to learn the business. I had to understand the business. So I learned by doing and I made money. And after I made money by doing, I became a passive investor because I take the income that I make off of the, pro the profits and I reinvest it passively, right? So that's what we like to do. So if you don't mind in the chat box, would you like to be an active investor, right? If so, how long? In the chat box, please put if you like to be an active investor, if so, how long do you want to be an active investor? The whole time, a short period of time? Um, tell me that. And if you want to be a passive investor, tell me, are you ready? Do you have 100 grand? Do you have 50 grand to invest? If you ain't got 50 grand to invest, I believe you should be an active investor to get to 50. But if you got 50 grand to invest right now, hey, you can be a passive investor. 50 grand would definitely help with a down payment on a house and definitely help with the first few months. So if you would like to be an active investor, would love, oh, wow. Oh, baby, look at this baby right here. Uh, so anybody else, would you like to answer that question? All right, we're going to move forward, and then we're going to go to there. So it's important. I'm going to skip this one. This ain't that important. That's just a quote. There you go. All right, so investing now, we are a platform to like to help folks to maximize their money. We want you to maximize your money. We want you to be wealthy. We want you to reach your goals. And we don't want you to take forever to do it. We want you to do it in seven to 10 years. Imagine in the next seven to 10 years, you've been in a point where you can actually retire and don't have to work for anyone else. Just imagine it. Imagine if you're that person. How would that make you feel? Right. If you could be retired in 17 years, it takes five years in a business to really kind of put some time in it. Ten years to become a mastery of it. That's why we put 17 years. Perfect timing for you. Perfect timing for you. All right. So this is a break, uh, break even analysis. If you look at that and you want to just download, please, please, please go to invest in now 2021 website that I come and then just get on my schedule. And then I, I'll provide you all this stuff. And we have a conversation as well. And you probably can download it from there too. I think I got free gifts on there. So you have to decide, do you want to take cash flow now? Do you want to take cash flow now? Do you want to make money every month over the amount that your expenses is in profit? All right? So we like to help you make that decisions and you can do it, right? You can do that by helping folks in Section 8 housing, you'll get a profit. The best thing about Section 8 housing, choice vouchers and, and those natures you literally get money at mute. You get money at mute. And that's important that you making a profit at mute, right? And then not only that, you're helping families. And if you do my strategy, you're taking advantage of properties that not cash flowing for the city, not cash flowing for the, the county, the parish, what have you. And when they're not making any money, then now you have less people they can hire for first responders less police officers, less firefighters, less people work at dispatch. So once you start getting those houses that's not getting taxes paid on them, now you're helping the city out and the county out and the parish out. Perfect. You that guy. You that person. Now, when people say that the market is saturated, I know that's the biggest excuse that people like to use to just put the problem on somebody else and, and, and say that they can't do what they're doing. Maybe because they're limited in knowledge. Maybe because they heard everybody else say it, so they're going to go with what everybody else say. But the, the studies don't show that. The studies just don't show what people are saying. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. When I talk to wealthy people that make a lot of money in real estate right now, they just don't look at the market as being saturated, horrible, oh, you can't make money in real estate. They just don't. Now, you'll have some coaches and some people to say those things to to frighten people and scare people and put a fear factor, but I'm just not that coach. I'm sorry. I'm not that guy. 
I believe it's opportunity if you got a toolbox full of tools. And if you have a toolbox full of tools, that means that I know how to buy and rehab. I know how to um, just find a rental. I know how to wholesale. I know how to do Airbnb. I know how to do group homes. I know how to do buy notes and sell notes. I know how to put lipstick on a pig. Uh, I know how to do hoteling. So when you got a lot of toolboxes, you'll learn how to pivot when the time is there. Not a knock on anybody that don't have all those structures, but you can't get it unless you're active, right? If you're active in this business, you learn how to do all those things and it don't come overnight. And you can't do all of them at once. One of my mentors said, if you chase two rabbits, you catch none. If you chase two rabbits, you catch none. So it's very important that we don't chase two rabbits. We go after one rabbit and we stay with that rabbit until we finish it. And that's how you can get to the percentages they're talking about. So 22, right? Investors bought 9.5% of the properties, all right? It was down a little bit in February. Uh, this is 22 right here, April and February time, right? It was down in February and went up. And then all of a sudden, year over year, and 27, 27%. I mean, that's pretty good. A single family home, they're buying them. Now, what I will say is you don't have people, regular normal people buying single family houses right now because the interest rates is just too high. It's too high for somebody to want to buy a house that for their family to live in. But investors, you're making money off of because you're going to charge over the interest rate and you're going to make a profit. So definitely encourage you to keep moving forward. Now, this is a busy slide. I am going to work with a marketer to try and give me some less words on here. Um, however, right now it is what it is. And it's just a snapshot of where I pulled off at vouchers, how vouchers work. Just break it down, how they choose your houses, how you work with the people locally um, at the, the certain um, public housing assistance area, agency areas, which are the PHAs. And it, it, it did, the money is getting paid directly from the housing agency to the landlord. So it's no middle people. No middle people. You ain't got to worry about, oh, I'm not getting money. No, it's going directly to you. Just do what they say do. Um, and, and let's talk a little bit more about active, the pros and cons of being active and, and passive investors. If you can just glance over there, I'm going to hit a couple of the high points. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I would say a couple of pros would be uh, you're managing, can take advantage of the market inefficiency, right? If you're an active investor, you're looking at off-market properties. That's a problem. You want to help people with that problem. I want to tell everybody on this call right now, if you do me a favor tomorrow and the rest of this week, drive your neighborhood. If you live in an apartment complex, drive the neighborhoods around your apartment complex. If you see a vacant property, take a picture of that vacant property, take a picture of the house on the left side of it and the right side of it. Write down an address. And if you don't want to write down an address immediately, because you may be scared of what people may be thinking or seeing you taking a picture, suspicious of you, then take a picture of the address of the property. And then when you get to the end of the street, take a picture of the street, right? So take a picture of the street sign that say what street it was on that you was on. Take a picture of the actual house in the middle. Take a picture of the house on the left. Take a picture of the house on the right. Send those addresses to us. We'll find out who owned them. If we're closing that deal, if you refer that over to us, we'll pay you a referral fee. Is that not cool? I'm telling you to drive your community. I don't care what state you live in, what city you live in. Drive your community and you do that. If you do that, then I got you. All right? We will pay you a referral fee. We're going to help that city, that county, that parish start back with making some money off of that house that's banded. Let's go ahead and get it. We're going to help that owner, the owner of that house, stop paying taxes on something that ain't bringing no money. And if they're not paying taxes on there, then, hey, we're going to do that. And we're going to help that owner not put the yard anymore. Have to worry about somebody breaking in and busting the windows out. Do you see that one, this one part is inefficiency. That part, you're taking advantage of market inefficiency. All market property is not producing money and causing problems for somebody and a lot of people. All right, then we'll talk about a con about that is. Let me see which con I want to talk about. Hmm, hmm. Strategies may provide fewer tax ah, advantages. All right, when you active, when you active, you're going to get taxed at a higher rate. Right now, you are an active employee. If you are an active employee at your job, you're getting taxed at pretty much doggone 40%. The job is making you pay your 20% to them, and then the, uh, their, the Uncle Sam going to charge you 20% taxes as well. So you're really paying 40% as an active person. 
right? That's not the coolest thing. That's not the coolest thing. That's not the coolest thing. So we want to encourage you not to be only active, right? You know, if you active, understand you're going to get taxed more. So we're talking about that bullet right there. Through a tax advantage is when you're active because now you're an employee and a worker, right? Now we want to look over here at passive investing. Passive investing, I love it, love it, love it. Let's see what we went. The most important piece is tax efficiency. Guys, when you're a, a, a passive investor, you get taxed only at 20%. You don't get taxed on a gross income. You get taxed after expenses. So if you make $100,000 and you bought a house, you remodeled that whole house, right? And it costs you 70 grand all in, you get taxed on 30 grand. You don't get taxed on that 20% off that 30 grand. Not that 20% off that 100 grand. You was out of expenses. Subtract all those expenses, $70,000. You got $30,000 off. That's what you're getting taxed off of. Guys, that's the most big, the biggest benefit I want to talk about right there, right? On that one. Let's see what the con is. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about that negative market. Sometimes it takes you a little longer to make your money back. You will make a deal with someone. You gave them your money on a passive investment and you don't see a return for a long time because the market shift on that person and that person is shifting with the market and they got a little longer before they get your return. You do, if, I can tell you about several investments I put money into that took a longer time than expected for my money to come back. All because either they don't want to pay out that company. They don't want to refinance at that moment. Um, the uh, they can't find no deals to close on and they're just holding the money that I, I invested to find the deal. So many ways, so many reasons that, that, that this can happen, right? A lack of potential downside protection, negative market shift. So that's a two. All right. I just wanted to highlight a couple pros and cons. Now people are eligible for um, vouchers, section eight vouchers to pay for a house and buy a house. This is not everywhere in the world. I can't say that. I cannot honestly say that. I would say you have to go online, check your um, public housing assistant agency areas and see if they have a, a choice voucher or home vouchers for people to purchase the house. If that's what you want to do. I know they have affordable housing in every city or every state. Right. But I can't tell you if they got the, the housing voucher, they can buy the house from you. I'm not going to say that with 100 percent accuracy. But in order to do that, they have to have a total annual gross income of certain a certain amount. Right. The family size got to be a certain amount that is, is limited to U.S. citizens. Right. But some new some immigrants can get some eligibilities. And then in, the family income may not exceed 50 percent of the medium of that neighborhood, that, that 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 community, that state. So you have to do your research on that. And, it, and all that research is already there. Their research is having a conversation with the agency in your city, in your area to see what that number is. And if you don't have, if you don't, if you can't do that. Here's how I do my research. I go to different places. That's why I said I got a lot of links open. And if I want to know the median prices of income in Fayetteville, North Carolina, because that's where I'm at. Boo, y'all. Right. This is well, this ain't income for that. OK, this is how much houses sell. So this is the market analysis for how much houses sell. All right. That goes to show you that. Okay, never mind. That ain't for that part of media for the people. I got another thing. Neighborhood Scout, I want to say I use for 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 the other ones. But yeah, there's some research I've been doing. So let me get back to my PowerPoint. I thought they were going to show me something else. All right, crazy deal. Crazy. I got for parish. I'm from Louisiana. So we got to represent the parishes, the cat the parishes, not only counties. All right. Again, thank you. I already had three people book a coaching call with me already. So I must be saying something that's valuable. I appreciate it. I definitely want to not waste your time and give you something you need. So anybody else, if you go to investingnow2021.com, you can go ahead and get on my schedule by booking a call and we can have a 15 minute conversation totally free at this moment. Uh, we'll be going back to charging, just selling my book for you to get on my call. But right now I've been free all year, ever since December, been a Christmas gift and a Christmas keep giving. All right. Um, you can go to a different, like I said, if you want to ask questions, I got your frequently asked questions right here about the housing vouchers. So you can go here to the hub sites and just ask them. So contact them if you want more information about how much, you know, you can, you can make in that area. 
All right, let's get to the did and gritty. Um, I don't know if I want to go through all these slides, but uh, what is the Section 8 Home Ownership Program? Right. It's been around. It receives up to 15 years of Section 8 money. Guys, imagine if you can make some money off of selling one of your properties and you're the bank. You're the bank. Not going to a bank. You can get a bank. You can get a bank involved. Right. But imagine if you can can leverage yourself as the bank to sell a property. That's what I want you to do. I know it's harder to figure out how do I take on a responsibility of worrying about if these folks going to pay rent, if they're going to pay me. Do I got to foreclose? Do I got to do this and that? Yeah, that's that's very daunting, right? It's very overwhelming. However, if you get over that fear, it's so rewarding. It's so rewarding. It's so rewarding, right? However, if you don't want to get that fear, then you'll work with the Section 8 housing. They'll work with a loan officer, and they'll help with the mortgage structure. They'll make sure that people can afford the property they're trying to buy from you. And then you can go ahead, they can buy the house from you right off your hand and you get a profit right off the bat, right off the bat, right? So that's pretty beautiful right there. Um, the participants must make a down payment, right? Provide at least 3% um, on a home purchase, which on a $100,000 house, that's $3,000, right? That, that, that's not much money, right? So pretty cool, pretty cool, right? Um, one percent purchase price, family, personal resources, saving account. They must have that in their saving account or what have you. Too easy. And the remaining two percent is contributed by the program. So really, I'm oh, I lied. They have to bring one thousand, and the company gonna bring another two percent. It's pretty cool, right? Three percent down total. They're only bringing one percent. You can do that during income tax time. They get that money. You can use that if you get a, you get everything they need in place. So it assists with everything. So that's pretty cool right there. Um, who qualifies to buy a house with Section 8? Uh, First-time homeowners, if they first time using the program, then they're eligible for it, right? Members of family must have a disability, right? If somebody in the family have a disability, they're eligible for it as well. So minimum income requirement. If they don't meet that medium price of the 50% of the medium of that area you live in, that's another criteria to make them get it, right? Um, we're going to skip that because we already talked about certain employment criteria and less eligible, all right? Uh, participate in the home ownership counseling. So basically, they'll be a part of first-time homeowner buyers. That's This is going to take care of this. This is going to take care of this. The first-time homeowner, and if they take that course, that's the counseling they'll receive. Uh, required, uh, specified by a local public housing agency. So you'll check with your local housing agency. You're going to find out exactly what they need. So when you're talking to your person, you can help them get qualified. The reason why I made this PowerPoint is not for you. It's for actual my tenants to look over that's on Section 8 housing so they can be educated on how to buy the house from me. So understand I'm sharing this with you so you can understand how you can take advantage of the people that's already having the opportunity to rent from you and have the government pay for their rent. Now you're saying, hey, buy the house with the government money as well, all right? Uh, so I created this PowerPoint for that purpose. That's the that audience I wanted to receive. Um, doesn't affect the amount of rent the landlord may charge. Wow, perfect, right? You don't care about that. You're, you're good. You can still charge the amount of rent you wanna charge and make your money. Uh, family must, uh, oh, it can't, it can't affect it, all right? And then family uh, must pay 30% of his monthly adjusted gross income to the rent. All right. So this is pretty cool, coach. Um, coach just sent me an a, a article this morning or this evening I was reading. And you talk about the 30-33 rule, the 30-33 rule. 30% um, of your gross monthly income should go towards your mortgage. 30% should be saved up for a down payment. And three times your annual income should be the amount you buy a house, the home value. So 30, 33, I read a little detail coaching that article. I just didn't read only what you gave me. I, I dug deeper. So that 30% proved pretty cool. I guess it paid off me reading that today. Um, and if the unit rents is greater than the payment standards, the family is required to pay additional amount. Wow, I love that. If you got a nice rental property and it's above their standard, they got to pay additional money. That's perfect for you. All right, so what does the program give? 
All right, this is, again, look at what I'm talking about. I wrote this for the voucher people. I wrote this for the voucher people, right? So the voucher equals to the normal voucher payment program scheduled, perfect. The uh, payments are usually made directly to the lender, perfect. You don't even got to worry about paying it if you're the, the Section 8 person. The money is coming straight from the PHA directly to the 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 loan, the actual payment. So that's a headache gone. Um, to pay approximately 30% of the adjusted monthly rate income, okay, then that, that's going to be from the actual person. All right. So local preferences, waiting lists involved. So you have to talk to the PHAs in your area to get clarification on that, how that process actually works. This is very generic, what I'm putting on here. I'm not going to repeat this stuff because it seems like it's kind of saying the same thing a little bit. Um, but PHA may give preferences to anybody homeless. If they're homeless, they get preference. That's why I'm looking at group homes right now. I'm looking at uh, sober living in right now. I'm looking at foster kids. Um you know, needing a house to stay. I'm looking at people that was in group homes, getting kicked out of group home needs to work there. I'm looking at um, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, false kids, they turn 18, need another place to live because they may be moving out of the house to their parents, right? Uh, the people that adopt them, perhaps. So that was some of the things I'm looking at for group homes, and that's what we want to help. Um, paying more than 50% income, okay, involuntary displaced. These people right here are preferences. So when you know somebody meet these categories, they make them buy that house faster from you. That's all it's saying. That's all it's saying. All right. How do they function? Mm -mm. Individual families pick the house. Guys, it ain't like the six and eight people saying that they're going to pick the house for them. The families pick the house. So if your house is the best house on the block, guess what? They're going to pick your house over everybody else's house. That's perfect. The landlord and the tenant reach an agreement, not the... Not anybody else. Hey, we got agreement between the landlord and tenant that this is the house that I want mine sent to you on this program. Then I work with Section 8 housing or public housing agencies, and we get it done. Once they do the inspection of the dwelling and determine the rent request is reasonable, that means you can't charge what you want to charge. You know how some people say, man, I'm going to go get this house. I'm going to charge $1,000 a month. Well, if the market don't give you $1,000 a month for that house, then you can't charge $1,000 for that house. You have to charge for the market it says. Now, if everybody else is doing cash, $600, right? And your house actually, the house worth $800, then Section 8 going to give you $800, right? $800 with the tenant paying their 30%. So it's pretty sexy on that end. Uh, determine the payment standards and comfortable to moderate prices dwelling. Now, oh, I just skipped that part, right? Local market rent. That's what I'm saying. Local market rent. So you just can't charge how much you want to charge. You got to stay within a local market rent and you will get top dollar local market rent. If your house have ceiling fans in it, central air and heat in it, uh, dishwashers in it, stuff of that nature, then you get very nice market rent because your house is above market rent now because you did a lot more. Market rent me, I got a great house with good structure, good bones, clean and nice. Above market me, I got dishwasher, built-in microwave, all this extra stuff in there. I don't do that. I don't do none of that. I get market rent. I don't get above market rent, right? That's too much extra money for somebody to tear up and then somebody to steal. So I don't do all that, right? I'm just being honest with y'all. I'm being transparent. All right. Um, and that is used to calculate the amount of money. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Bob, 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 doesn't affect the month rent. Okay, doesn't affect that. That's great, 30%. All right, cool. You got the gist of that. All right, roll the tenant and the landlord and the housing agency hood plays, right? So PHA approved the family for the unit. Once they approve the family for the unit, they are signed some documents. You assign some documents. Everybody signed a document saying we agree on this price with this contract for the property. Right, the tenants, you and six and eight all sign, and then that may take two months, may take three months, maybe longer. However, whatever day you pass inspection, that's how long that's when the day the money starts flowing. Right? The tenants still gotta pay you rent their portion of that voucher up until the end if they're just renting. If they're buying it by that time, you probably be already in the buying process. Right. So I'm just being transparent. That don't happen overnight. This is government assistance. 
And, you know, no, the government people usually move on their own time and not your time. And their time is 20 times longer than your time. <laughs> Hopefully nobody worked for the government on this call, right? I hope you don't because that's just my math. All right, so the tenant pays their share of the rent on time. If they don't pay their share of the rent on time, evict them. You can, all right? If they get an eviction, they kicked off the Section 8 program or the housing program. They don't want that, so they're going to pay you on time. Right, they love that discount they're getting. Uh, maintain a unit in good condition. You can do inspections to make sure they're doing that. If you do a good job of vetting them, you don't have to do inspections every month. If you do a good job of vetting them, you don't have to do inspections every month. But if you don't do a good job of vetting them, you have to do inspection every month until you prove that they're good. You don't have to do it every month. Right, you can do it once a quarter. So my method is. Hey, vet them really good first. So I wouldn't have to do it every month. Let me do it every month until I don't have to do it every month. And now I can do it once a quarter just to make sure I can check the, the vent systems and make sure nothing stopped up, no water leaking up under the sinks. And ain't going to cost me much more money, right? Notify PHA of any changes in the income to the family. This is for the tenant. This is what they have to do. If they start making more money, they got to let them know. If they make less money, they got to let them know, right? So they can get their stuff adjusted. Nine times 10, if they're making more money, they're not letting them know. But if they're making less money, they will let them know so they can get their rent adjusted. That does not affect the landlord. You're still going to get market rent. It just adjusts the portion that they pay the landlord. Uh, Section 8 of PHA, public housing agency, will have to pay you more. That's all it's saying. Landlord obligation, provide a decent, safe, sanitary house for the, house, the tenants, right, with reasonable rent. That's why you can't overcharge, reasonable, right? But safe and sanitary, that's it. That's it, safe and sanitary, right? Good bones, good structure, clean. That's well, not even clean. It just says safe and <laughs> sanitary, all right? I guess clean. That's clean, all right? So that's clean. All right, all right. So housing authority, obligation, provide the family with the housing assistance. They job is to pay the money, all right? Enable the family to seek suitable housing. Enter to a contract with the landlord. You make the contract directly with the housing by way of the tenant. Um, examine the family income and, uh, and composition annually. Make sure that they are eligible to stay on a housing program and know the amount that they do. So if they make more money, the next year they'll adjust the rent, right? They'll adjust the rent based off that. If they make less money, they're going to adjust off that. And then they do an annual inspection to see that the house is still in good shape and good condition. And what I do is I have some tenants um, that decide to, I make the, all of the tenants put insurance on their houses. So they have to do rental insurance. At the same token, I will tell them, if you need to do this, you're not mandatory to do this, you're more than welcome to pay additional money and I'll put in an additional savings so that at the end of the year, if you tow this house up, the money I'm going to fix this house up is going to be with your money. If not, then if the house tow up, you're getting evicted out of my house and you need to go find you another one. That's what I do with them, right? That's how I kind of mitigate that problem so I can have income at the end of the year to fix on a property for the stuff that they damage. If I don't live there, I didn't damage it. So I make a deal with them that you can pay a little extra, I'll put it to the side, and that money would go for the end of the year. If something is wrong with this house, more than reasonable wear and tear, then I'm gonna use your money for that. If not, then, hey, go find your new house and figure out how to switch your voucher and do that headache, right? That's it. Um, so HUD Road provide funds for the PHA. So HUD is the um, housing urban development. They give the money to the public housing agency to pay for the tenant rent that's going to come to you. That's really all it is. All right. Major takeaways. There's ways of helping people. That's what I'm going to say in a nutshell. There's ways that you can play an active role with helping the city make more money. Right. If a house is not getting taxes paid on it, they're losing money. If the house is not receiving tax money, then first responders are not being able to have money for to do stuff in their budget. Police officers, firefighters, dispatchers. That's who I think about. Not to mention you have water, people that work at a water company and other public affairs for the city. Your money, when you pay taxes, is supposed to pay their salaries and pay their budgets. That's why it's important that we take these abandoned houses that's in your community and let's get them active, right? Let's get them active where they're making money. Then, not only are you doing that, you have families that want nice, nice homes. You have so many landlords that slum landlords that are giving them anything. So if you take that property, you just gave them a house 
that they're happy to be in, the neighborhood happy you did it, and everybody's happy, right? And then they're going to pay you market rent for it. You're eligible by just taking the steps on going to your Section 8 agency, your affordable house agency, your public housing agency, and going to their website and just defining what it looked like. What is this? What is the application? What do I need in my house? What's the basic standards? If you're working with me, I'm going to help you define that quicker, but that's what you're doing, right? And then after that, you're signing contracts with the housing authorities and you're signing a lease with the tenant. You sign a lease with a tenant and you line a contract with the housing authority because the money coming straight from the housing authority to you and the tenant got to pay you that portion as well, right? Uh, so you partner with Section 8, you partner with Hood and you make some money. And a mayor told me one time, for if you want to make real money, you partner with the government because the government will pay, right? So real estate investing is on the rise again. It's always, it never left. You just got to take the actions, right? You got to take the actions. So take risk to leads to uh, real estate and invest in innovation, listen to co customers and learn what they need, test the product until you get it right. Guys, in this business, you don't know it all. I don't know it all. I don't never claim to know it. I just know more than the average person because I study it and I took several actions. If you take the action, you're going to learn from those actions and you're going to prove that it's wrong or right, it's correct or wrong, it's good or bad, or this is repeatable. Once you're repeatable, you keep repeating what works and you eliminate what doesn't work. It's no harm, no foul. Again, if you go to investinnow2021.com, you can book a call with me right now. Get on my schedule. We will love to have a 15 minute conversation with you. Um, we provide a review, guys. If you don't mind, go to Why Wait to Be Great, um, Google review and provide a review. And that'd be great and appreciate it if this was informative to you. And um, if you want to provide feedback, once you're going to call, I can send you a link to provide feedback. I do greatly appreciate you all. Um, yes, that is a working phone number. Yes, you can go to investingnow2021.com or .org. You can email that. Um, I do have a podcast as well and other information. So if you want free gifts, I do have free gifts on my website as well. Um, it's, it's different free gifts. I have wrote a book. So what questions you have? Put your hands up in the chat box. More than welcome to answer any of your questions if you have any. We'd we'll love to have a conversation with you. Coach Joe, if you want to give any updates about the market, what we're looking at right now, what's going on, if you are available to talk, we will love to hear it. Um, I would love to work with each and, and each one, each and every one of you. I would love to work with y'all to help you to meet financial freedom so that you can live a, a stress-free life financially, right? If we can get you to making passive income financially, now you ain't got to worry about that. You can actually do what you put on this earth to do and be that inspiration, that motivation, and that encouragement to somebody else. And that's what I want to help you. I, me, I want to help you with that. Coach Joe, you available? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, Coach? Hey, brother. Brother, I'm glad I hear your voice, man. Everything just got better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I, I feel the same way when I hear my voice. <laughs> <laughs> So I talk to myself all day, man, nonstop, every day. <laughs> I said, now look, I speak to myself, I don't answer myself, you know. Well, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. But no, go. no, Coach, I, I know you, you're asking about what's taking place in, in the real estate industry uh, currently. So this morning I had a, a brief meeting with a, a mortgage uh, broker team, and uh, they were just mentioning to me that, you, you know, it's it's tight right now. And what's tight is that the, the interest rates are continuing to increase. We went through a slight decrease. Next thing you know, boom, the feds decided to increase the rates again. So right now you're getting quoted for 30 year mortgages at 7%. You know, 7% during our time, it's it's unheard of for owner occupied properties. You know, uh, back in the early 2000s, 10% was normal. However, in the early 2000s, the average cost of a home was about $140,000. Average income was about $30,000. Take away 20, uh, I'm sorry, $11,000 for expenses, boom, that's what you're left with. Now, today's time, your average home goes from $140,000 to $410,000. So if you owned a home in the early 2000s, 
right now your house has pre- uh, appreciated on average nationally over three hundred thousand dollars. So when Coach is speaking about solid, you, you know, uh, uh, investments, this is definitely a solid investment strategy. Yes, interest rates are extremely high. You know what else is high? Rents are, is high. Insurance is high. Taxes are high. But if you buy it at the right price, the right price, your rent will be enough to cover all of those things. Whether your mortgage is at a uh, 7 8%, 12 13%. If you buy it at the right price, you're able, you'll be able to put a long-term loan on it to where you can have a positive cash flow. So for us that are investors, now is a really great time to come in and be uh, ultra aggressive, build out a portfolio. So when the rates do drop, you do the refinance, you increase your cash flow almost double. Now, I'll give you an example. If you purchase a home right now and, uh, you know, a rental property, let's say your mortgage, uh, your interest rates on, on that property is about an 8.5%. It's almost 9%, 8.5%. Now, you're able to ride that thing out for a little bit. Let's say interest rates gets gets down and, you know, in, in a year and a half, two years, and now you're at 6.5. Difference between those two, two points could be about $150 to, you, you know, $200 difference in your monthly payment. So if you got 10 properties and you got $200 extra, remember, rents aren't, aren't decreasing. Every year, the HUD is giving more money because rents increase. So if your interest decreases, rent increases, you know, you're able to hold on to those assets. You go from making $400 to $600 to $725 to, you know, $775. So you, it just keeps growing. So coach mentioned that, hey, look, it's a solid investment uh, strategy, and it definitely is. So that's for those of you guys that are like interested in building out portfolios. We also do, you know, fix and flips, uh, also wholesaling, teach you how to buy, uh, renovate properties with none of your own money, none of your own credit. Um, uh, wholesaling, teach you how to control properties without any of your money, any of your credit. And so fix and flip, we all know what fix and flips are, you know, buy low, renovate, put it on the market, sell it for a profit. So any of those tough topics that you guys want, you know, more information on, Coach T is the perfect guy to go to. Coach, that's it for me, brother. Man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have two people still, three people still on. I know one person by phone. Um, if you have any questions, I'm um, looking at chat box. I don't see anything. Um, any questions? It's your time now. Oh, good. I got finishing good time. <laughs> I can get some sleep tonight. Yes, sir. Any questions? Any questions? Please feel free to ask. Um, if you want to unmute, you know, stick a thumb up or something to ask to unmute, put in the chat box so we can see. Um, I don't know how many folks I need to start putting on my other phone on um on uh, Facebook and stuff and the other places I got us going. All right. Seeing none. Hey, look, thank you for getting on my schedule. i um, looking forward to speaking with you. Um, if you haven't got on my schedule again, go to investingnow2021.com and the box come up and you can just get right on my schedule and then you can look at the website as well. So you can kind of um, browse it and, and know more about me. Um, the whole goal of this company, our organization is we want to structure profitable wholesaling transactions to help you to make money. We want you to help you make money so you can buy your run properties with OPM, other people money. And we want you to create a positive, controllable retirement strategy with your money that you're making off of the money you're making, right? With the money you're making off the money you're making, right? That's the easiest way to say that. You make money by invest in, uh, putting contracts on the wholesale deals. You wholesale that, make the profits. You buy your rentals with that money and you fix on your rentals with that money. And now you got passive income. So after you make that passive income, you get so much up, guess what you do? You start being a, 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 a private money lender. You go from active to passive investor and you reinvest that money and make your money, make money guys. That's really that simple. I know you wanted to be complicated. I know you wanted to make it sound hard. I'm not that coach. Take the actions, 
find out, learn from doing, right? Learn from doing. So thank y'all for your time. Thank you for staying to the end. Appreciate y'all. Looking forward to talking to you very soon. Take care. Thank you, Coach, for that overview, Could you brother. give me that website? I mean, your website again. I'm sorry. Oh, investing now. I, uh, I-N-V-E-S-T-I-N-G. Now, N-O-W, 2021.com. Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Y'all take care. Y'all have a good night. Good night.